Hello everyone and this is Axfield here. In this video I'm going to list you 10 things that I should have done from the start in Mountain Blade but obviously that I only could figure out on a much later stage. So maybe this will help you to get you the best start within this game and to get you going. So number one is to have a variety of food. So without me knowing to have a variety of food boosted the morale of my troops and at the early stage of the game it does make a big difference especially if your morale is low and you're just starting off with weak troops so number two is to get a companion as soon as possible and you can do that right from the start even if you can only get up to 20 troops in your party so you can go to any village and go to the tavern district and look for companions there and remember when you do talk to the companion uh, or the possible companion remember to press on the name to check all their stats to see what their skills are and to make sure that you get the best possible companion to suit your needs number three is to invest in as much caravans as you can so my assumption was that the workshops will give you more money uh, seeing that they cost more than the caravans and also with the caravans you had to use your companions to get the money but uh, I must say that the caravans has become a much more lucrative commodity for me uh, than the workshops so I would suggest that you rather use one or two of your companions from the start and use them for the caravans as you can generate much more income uh, through the caravans that you can possibly do through the workshops number four is to compete in all arena challenges that you find along the way so obviously at the beginning of the game you won't perform at the arenas as well uh, as at the later stage of the game and also because you've got the lower armor but you can still compete in all the arenas it won't uh, be to your detriment uh, the only thing is like if you're not so confident uh, in the arenas make sure not to bet too much money and uh, but at the end of the day you do get armors and weapons uh, that you can use uh, for your troops but then also if you do get duplicates you can sell those weapons and armors for a really good price and that will also give you the financial boost that you need number five is to work as a mercenary for longer or as long as you can so if you do get somebody to propose to sign you up as a mercenary uh, do accept it and then try to work for that kingdom as long as you can to build up some money uh, to be a mercenary is one of the most effective ways to gain yourself uh, money but also reputation throughout the kingdom of Kilradia. I found that the best way to uh, boost my bank was to just work as a mercenary but then at the same time I somehow ended up getting the most uh, kingdom reputation through working as a mercenary so maybe it's a good idea to maybe work as a mercenary up until when you get to kingdom level 5 and then from there decide how you want to proceed so number six is to be very picky with the wife the potential wife that you choose so you can go to any village or castle and then you can go to the keep or the lost hall and you'll find possible wives that you can choose so you can speak to them and then as you speak to them you can press on their names and then you can see what type of stats they've got so my problem was in the past I used to choose a wife simply by appearance which I thought looked nice but uh, when you press on the names you'll see they've got a lot of stats and um, there are a specific woman in each kingdom that gives you proper or good stats and of all of them I believe the lady that you can find uh, in Sturja, Svana she has got the best stats so I've also put a list uh, on the description there a link that shows you all the best candidates that you can choose as a possible wife so also the more skillful these women are the more likely they are to give you a hard time when you are courting them so what I would suggest is to maybe save your game before you start courting them and uh, if anything does go south you can just load the previous game number seven is to have quality over quantity troops although obviously if you've got a, a large number of quality troops that's also good but never go into a battle thinking that because you've got 
500 troops, troops that you can beat another army of 300 troops. If they've got much stronger troops than your troops, then they'll take you out very quickly. So what I would suggest is to take your army, to attack a few bandits and attack the smaller armies that you can to build up your skills of your troops. Otherwise, if you can get stronger troops right from the start, I would recommend that. And if you don't have as much money, make your party slightly smaller, but then make sure you've got the best possible troops in your army. Number eight is to take out leaders to push down the other army's morale. So when you go into battle with any army, they'll have leaders. And if you are able to take those leaders out, it really is devastating for the opposite army's morale. So you can usually find um, some of the leaders will go head first into battle and they are quite easy to take out. But then you can also find leaders standing at the back of the battalions uh, and then also with the flanking troops with the cavalry. They will also be in small groups sometimes there. And they've got distinguished armor so you can see them from a distance which characters are the leaders and if you can take those guys out you'll really really knock uh, some damage uh, do some major damage on the other army's morale and it could change the tide of war for you so number nine is that when you start out as your own kingdom to give castles and towns to your companions as much as you can and as much as you have available so i was very reluctant to do this as i thought that by having kingdoms under my own name will generate more money and uh, was kind of like a greedy approach but by you assigning companions to castles and towns they will find two extra lords as well as a wife or if they are women they will find a husband with two lords or or ladies that will be assigned to their kingdom or to their castle so they will automatically bring more leaders into your kingdom and uh, you can get two to three leaders for each companion that gets assigned to a castle or a town. So in other words, you've got more potential armies that can help you to take over Kilradia. And by them also managing those castles and towns, it is less expenses for you at the same time. Number 10 is to take over rebel towns as soon as you see any rebel towns forming uh, to help you establish your kingdom so if you haven't started to start it with your own kingdom yet the best way to do it is to take over rebel towns um, that that is turning against their own kingdoms so these rebel towns usually have lower tier troops although sometimes they can have a lot of troops they are easier to take out generally so you can just look for any party that's roaming around on the map uh, of the rebel leaders and then you can take them out and then automatically you will declare war with those rebels and then you can go ahead and take over those towns and what i would suggest is also when you do take over these towns get maybe two or three towns first before you decide to start your own kingdom so you can uh, uh, take over these kingdoms under your own name without having a kingdom first so make sure to build up your your stash of towns before you decide to open up your own kingdom well that's it from me everyone and I would like to thank you for listening in and watching this video and if you enjoyed these tips please feel free to press the like and subscribe button as well as the bell notification to stay updated on similar videos to these ones as well as game series videos it would really mean a lot if you would subscribe and it will help advance this channel and thank you so much for watching and then I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.